Hey, Sabalan. Hey, this is Bo the Mechanic. Uh, it's Monday. It's another awesome day in Tennessee. Spring is here. Pollen is killing me. I've been taking all types of crazy drugs. Took tons of Allegra, Benadryl, awesome eye drops. I got horrible allergies, so, you know, I'm toughing it out. It's Monday. I'm here. Lucky for you guys, I'm making a video today on how to install a CD player. Uh, one of my customers with the garbage truck, you might have seen some of the other videos. One of the long laundry list of stuff that he wants me to do is install a CD player in the truck so he can jam out, I guess, while he drives. So, you know, this is really common though. I, I can't tell you guys how many people ask me how to install a CD player. Hey, can you install a CD player? They ask me that. I, of course I can't. On the level of difficulty, it's maybe like a one, you know, on a one to ten. So I, I don't ever try to do it. It's just kind of a waste of my time, and I can't make any money doing that. But what I can do, you know, in this big job, I can I can factor it in, you know, with lots of other stuff, and it becomes more profitable. But anyway, it's a positive for you guys. So I'm going to show you guys how to install a CD player. Uh, you know, I think this will be useful, and I, I don't know how many are out there. And I'm sure there's lots, but maybe mine will be a little bit cooler than the next guys. Okay. You know, basically what I did is I went out and bought the cheapest uh, CD player I could get. Just a CD player with a USB port so you can plug your iPod, plug your cell phone in and, and listen to Pandora or Jam Out, whatever you want to do. Uh, this unit right here was $76 from Walmart. It's just a JVC, JVC unit. I took it out of the box. There you go. Looks nice. I took it out of the box and opened it up and got the wiring harness out. And I'm going to show you guys that in just a second. But, you know... Basically, any of you guys could do this. This is really, really, really simple. You know, the basics, uh, any mechanic can do it. Anybody that just has a little bit of a working knowledge can do it. And so I'm going to show you just here with a battery that I can hook it up just with a battery. Don't even, you know, you don't have to worry about anything. Just the basics are right here. Let me show you. I'll show you how to actually install, install it completely, but I'm going to show you how to install it just with a battery. Just a proof of concept is what I mean. So here's the CD player, and here's your wiring harness, okay? Now, you know, this wiring harness is the one that's going to be provided in your box. It's just a normal JVC plug. Everybody has their own different plug, but all the color coatings are very similar. Okay, and the wires that we're going to be really worried about, just to turn this thing on, all you need is these three wires right here. Okay, a yellow wire, a red wire, and a ground. Okay, the ground goes to negative. It even has a little negative sign on it. See, negative for ground, negative side of the battery. The red wire and the yellow wire, okay, are, are both positives, okay, and the reason they're both positives is because the CD players have a memory, okay, so that it remembers your presets, like the stations that you have, you know, all the different stations you listen to in whatever city you live in, you preset them, you press one or two and hold it for a minute, and it, it remembers what station you got so you can jam out quicker. But either way, so that's why it has two wires, okay, one wire goes to the battery, directly to the battery. How, however you choose to do it. You might want to run a straight wire all the way to your battery. You might want to check a fuse somewhere up underneath your dashboard and run it into a fuse. But this one goes straight to your battery, okay? The other one is this positive right here, and this one would go to a switchable link. Like, say your ignition switch, some wire off your ignition switch. Some key, you know, when you turn the key to the on position or the car running position, this circuit would have power. And I'm going to show you guys how to find that. Really simple. It sounds complicated, but it's really, really easy. So basically, there's the breakdown. You got one that goes to the ground. You could ground it to the chassis. You could ground it to the, the actual battery of the car. You could ground it to anything that has a ground. I'll show you how to do that. These two wires, like I said, one's positive to the battery and one goes just to the key switch that is positive to the battery. But for simplicity's sake, let's just look right here, okay? This is a just straight up battery. Let me show you. Look, magic, it's just a straight up Optima battery, okay? It's an Optima battery. Watch this right here. Positive. I'm just gonna take some pliers and clip it to the battery. A little too tight. Blang, blang. Positive. Negative. Now I could plug this thing in and it'll work. No problems. That simple. Look at that. She's on. CD player's on. She works. Everything will come up. Demo. It's in demo mode right now, as you guys can see. You know, and right now, if I put a CD, CD in this thing, I don't have one, but if I had a CD, I'd chuck it in there, and if I had some speakers, I'd wire the speakers up, and we could listen to it right now. Nothing magic, okay? Just with those three wires. 
All the rest of these are your speaker wires, except for this one right here, which is for a remote antenna, but we're not really worried about that right now. So all these, just speaker wires. It's nothing magical, it's nothing scary to be afraid of. Okay, this being said, I'm gonna set this thing down now and kind of uh, set it up here, see if I can. Okay, let's talk about a couple of things real quick too before we get any further. As you can see, you know, the CD player's right here. <sighs> Slide a little camera over a little bit more. I got my CD player, it's only hooked up right now just straight off a of battery. Okay, but what happens a lot of times is people, you know, will try and install their CD player and they'll get a little bit carried away. And they won't disconnect the battery, the actual car battery in their car, and they'll start cutting wires and they'll, they'll, they'll short some out, okay? And what happens when you short one of these wires out, you're positive in a ground, you short them out. A bunch of voltage tries to go across the poles, amperage really. A lot of energy tries to go across those two wires and you're going to burn up either the wires or a fuse if you have a fuse. And so almost all cars have fuses on them, okay, like fuses for the radios. So when you do that, you're going to blow one of your fuses. You'll blow the fuse inside the car and you might blow the fuse inside the CD player. Okay, and so I'm going to show you guys where that's at, specifically on the CD player side. You know, because we're not at the car right now, in the truck. This, all CD players have a fuse internal to the CD player. So let's say you buy a car or you got a car and all of a sudden your radio starts working, stops working, your CD player stops working. The CD player's not working because possibly the, the fuse in the back of it's been burned up. So I'm going to show you guys where that is. It's real simple. You see in the back of this unit, I just plugged it up. I can just as easily unplug it. When you unplug it, there's a fuse right there. See that 10 millimeter fuse right there? All CD players, all modern CD players that are aftermarket have a, a little fuse right here. And if you cross the wires or if you're messing around with something and this thing gets popped, you know, like wires are crossed or something crazy happens, this fuse can oftentimes get burnt. I mean, it'll burn up. That's its design. It's designed to burn up before your wires and your car burn up or before you actually hurt the CD player itself. So it's kind of like a fail-safe device. These are really, really cheap. You can get them from AutoZone. It's just a fuse. Walmart sells them. Gas stations sell them. Everybody sells them. But so basically, this is one of the fuses. One of the fuses goes right here. Another thing is a lot of fuses will be actually in the fuse panel. All cars have a fuse, a fusible link for your radio. It might say stereo. It might say radio. And you'll pull that fuse and check it and make sure that it's still good. Uh, you know... I can't tell you how many times I'll be working on a car and something something's wrong with it and, and what's happened is that somehow a fuse has been blown. I, you know, for whatever reason the fuse got blown and, and people bring it in here and I can just replace a fuse and then you can kind of, kind of troubleshoot a little bit and figure out what actually caused the issue. But nonetheless, you know, your fuses is definitely a thing to look into. If you got a CD player already and it isn't working, check your fuses. Check the fuse in this thing and then check the fuse in your car. The fuses in your car most of the time are going to be underneath the steering wheel somewhere there next to your feet, next to the pedals. Look up, you know, hop underneath the car a little flashlight and look around. You might see a fuse panel. The other place in a lot of cars that you'll see it is actually in the engine bay. You pop the hood, look next to the, you know, top of the motor somewhere and there'll be a big block of wires and stuff and, and you'll look there and it'll say fuses. We pop it open and look at it and check your fuse specifically that says stereo or radio. But uh, so that's just a basic little rundown on, on troubleshooting it. Now what I'm going to show you guys how to do is how to actually install this thing in your car and install it so it works properly. Okay, so let's get to that.